You are listening to Book Clips, a podcast where authors and narrators expose you to excerpts from different books. You can find the show and more by searching for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean or Stitcher. Hi, I'm Cheyenne Blue and I'm here today to read from my novel Fenced in Felix, which is a standalone novel but it's also the third book in my Girl Meets Girl series. One morning, about a week after my trip to Warindi, I sat in the old parlour turned office flipping through my bookings. I had no trail rides arranged, but I still had to check on my horses and on hay. Winter was the dry season in the outback, and realistically I couldn't expect rain for another few months at least, if then. The horses were already starting to become ribby. I grabbed my Akubra and went out to the veranda to find my boots. The phone rang as I was jamming them on my feet. I raced back inside and grabbed the phone before it could ring out. If only there was mobile reception here, I wouldn't miss so many calls. Jaber out station, this is Felix. Hi Felix, this is Josie. I don't know if you remember me. I'm the bar person at the commercial, I interrupted. I smiled at the remembered pleasure of watching her stretch for the cheese and onion chips. Too late, I wondered what she'd make of me remembering her so well, but I'd never been good at playing it cool. Yeah, that's me. You've got a good memory. A mental image of her legs flashed through my mind. Suppose it comes of having to remember guests. True. Was that disappointment in her voice? I'm the same. So many people come into a pub and they all get offended if you don't remember them. I pressed the phone closer to my ear and glanced at the caller ID. Private number. Oh well. But I remember you very well, Josie continued. For lots of reasons. I've been sending all sorts of people down to your campground. Grey nomads. A few backpackers. I hope at least some of them have found you. Quite a few have but they didn't say who recommended them or I'd have dropped by to thank you. You can thank me anyway if you want, Josie said. It struck me I'm sending all sorts of people out to you and maybe I could take a look myself. Actually, I know it's short notice, but I was wondering if you could fit me in for a trail ride this morning. I have a last minute day off. That's no problem. There's no one else booked today. What time? I'm sitting in my car ready to drive away. According to your brochure, I'll be there in half an hour. I don't mind waiting if you're busy but it will be good to ride before it gets too hot. Drive slowly and that will be fine. It will take me a bit to get the horses ready. Thanks. See you, Felix. The phone went dead. I hurried out of the house. In truth, I wouldn't be ready in half an hour, but I hadn't wanted to put her off. Halfway to the barn, I realised, too, that I had neglected to ask her about her horse experience, the sort of ride she wanted or how long she wanted to go for. She mentioned being able to ride, so I figured she'd want something with a bit of liveliness to it. I went into the home paddock with a couple of halters and looked at my small herd. Patchwork should do her nicely. The piebald mare was a lively but obedient ride, with a surprising turn of speed and agility on her. She'd been my last barrel racing pony before I'd stopped competing to care for Mum. And if Josie was riding Patch, I'd need something equally speedy to keep up with her, or she'd leave me floundering. I slipped the halters on Patch and a young stock horse, Ben, and led them back to the barn. I liked to check on the campers in the morning to make sure everything was okay, but today the rounds would have to wait. I was brushing Ben's tail when I heard a car. A door slammed and then footsteps came down the barn aisle. Felix? I straightened from Ben's rear end and smiled. Hi Josie, nice to see you again. Her smile could have been merely friendly, the practiced smile of a bartender but I thought there was an extra curve to it, more than she needed for the appearance of friendliness. It crinkled her eyes. She looked good. My gaze flicked up and down. I told myself it was a professional assessment to make sure she was suitably dressed for the ride, but deep down I knew better. I just wanted to check her out. She was appropriately, if eccentrically, dressed. Her jeans were close-fitting and would protect her legs from rubbing on the saddle, but they were mauve and she'd paired them with a lime green singlet and a cubra hat. But her boots were well-worn and sturdy, and obviously hadn't been new for a long time. They were flat-heeled leather, the boots of a stockman. Ben, the big sook that he was, ambled over to the bar and pushed his nose against her shoulder, leaving a damp mark on the singlet. She rested her palm against his cheek and worked her fingers up to scratch him behind the ear. He closed his eyes in pleasure and dropped his nose down to rest between her breasts. Lucky nose. Am I riding this one? No, Ben's a pussycat, but he pulls like a train. I'm sure you'll prefer your arms remain detached. You're riding Patchwork. She's in the next stall. Josie paced down to where Patch looked over the bar, ears pricked, ready to meet a new friend. 
Aren't you the pretty one? Josie crooned, her voice low and sweet. Aren't you the dainty girl? Don't let her looks fool you. She's fast as a bullet and gutsy as they come. She and I won the open barrel racing competition three years in a row at the Mount Isa Rodeo. I'm honoured you're letting me ride her. I figured if you've ridden a fair bit, you wouldn't appreciate one of the quieter horses. Patch will give you a good time. I finished tacking Ben, pushed the bar across and led him out into the aisle. Josie followed suit and led Patch out. She handled the mare with confidence. Obviously, she was used to horses. We mounted and I led the way out of the yard, along the beaten path that skirted the edge of the campground. A couple sitting outside their caravan lifted a hand as we went by and Josie waved back. I sent those two here, she said. Must have been three days ago. I guess they like it. I hope so. We rode side by side, far enough apart that I could make sure Josie was comfortable in the saddle. She rode in a loose manner, not quite slouched Australian stockman style, but not upright English either. I guess she'd grown up with ponies, learnt at a riding school somewhere, and then relaxed into a more casual style. But she was easy on the horse with light hands, and Patch, by her pricked ears and free movement, was clearly fine. Josie was also comfortable with silence, something I appreciated. My love of quietness came from growing up in the bush, where low population density meant that I'd often been alone. Had Josie also grown up somewhere rural? I stole a glance at her. Her mop of curls exploded out from underneath the riding helmet, beads glinting in the sunlight. This particular piece of scenery was clearly new to her, but as she glanced around, it was obvious she was familiar with the outback. Then she looked across at me and grinned. Do you have any idea how good this is after a week of serving beer to sweaty station hands and dusty tourists? She continued without waiting for my response. Bloody good. It's been months since I've been on a horse. She patted Patch's neck. And this mare is a darling. She is. And you're handling her nicely. Patch sidestepped a lizard and snorted. And Josie momentarily swayed in the saddle. I revised my opinion slightly. Despite Josie's comfort on the horse... Maybe she wasn't as experienced as I'd thought. But it could also just be that she hadn't ridden for a while. Thanks. How many horses do you keep here? Half a dozen, all for trail riding. A couple of quiet ones for beginners, a couple of ponies for kids, and these two. I have a horse down in South Australia. I haven't seen her in months, of course. I miss her. That explained her ease around horses. What's your horse like? She's a thoroughbred, an ex-race horse. Feisty and utterly beautiful. She didn't do well at the track, not fast enough. You must miss her. Yeah, but I move around a lot. It's hard to do that with a horse in tow. I'd love a dog, but even that would be hard. A lot of the jobs I take come with accommodation, like the commercial, and they're usually reluctant to have a dog. Maybe I should get a caravan and be self-sufficient, but I don't think my old car would tow it. Where do you keep your horse? In South Australia at a friend's place. Josie shut her mouth abruptly. The sentence clipped off as if she wanted to say more, but didn't. Is that where you're from? Yeah, small town, north of Adelaide. Not out back, but still fairly rural. I learnt to ride there as a kid, getting lessons in exchange for mucking out at a local stables. I left when I was 17. Been moving around ever since. I wondered when she'd stopped off long enough to acquire a horse, but figured it wasn't my business. Josie had doubtlessly had some extended times in one place. She nudged Patch closer to me and the horse obliged, shifting close enough that Josie's stirrup banged against mine. We're in a good place, though. Think I'll stick around a while. Chris and Madge are decent people, and I like working for them. That isn't often the case with these sorts of jobs. Got sick of working for dickheads a long time ago. That's one of the reasons I move so often. They also pay me fairly, and I've got a reasonable room upstairs. And now that I've met you, I know where I can come on my days off. She looked at me sideways from under the helmet. That is, if you don't mind and you've got a spot for a rider. Of course not. I don't mind if you want to call at the last minute as you did this morning, as long as you're not offended if I'm fully booked, although that doesn't happen often. She blew out a gusty sigh. That's great. Thanks, Felix. I'm Cheyenne Blue, and that was a reading from Fenced In Felix. This was an episode of Book Clips. Check out the show notes for more on this book. And it would be great if you would rate the show and subscribe to the Lesbian Talk Show podcast channel for more woman-centered content. If you are an author of lesbian fiction, then send us your reading. You can find out how on the lesbiantalkshow.com slash reading.